I will show you how to create your own augmented reality app by overlaying a 3D model onto your scene. I will walk you through step-by-step step from viewing your 3D model, 3D model representation, camera calibration, post estimation with Oruko markers, scaling your 3D model, using mesh simplification, rendering, culling, 3D model object frame, rotating your object, and finally, Lambertian shading. By the end of this video, we will see how we could render Baby Yoda in real time and overlay it into our scene. If you want to have my code, check out my website at kevinwoodrobotics.com. If you're new to my channel, I teach robotics and AI, so subscribe to learn more. All right, so first thing you want to do is figure out what 3D model you want to use. Here we take a look at Baby Yoda in Blender, so you can see this is the model that we're working with. And if you zoom in, you can see there's a lot of details in this model. And later on, we'll go into ways we could simplify this for various reasons, such as especially if we're running in Python, we want it to be very fast, so we'll do different things to optimize, which I'll walk you through. Let's take a look at how a 3D model is defined. So here you can see that a 3D model is defined by a bunch of faces. Here we're using triangular faces. So each triangle is defined by vertices. Here we call V1, V2, and V3. But each vertice here has an XYZ coordinate. So these three vertices form the face, and each face has what's called a VN, which is the normal vector, XYZ. Sometimes the normal vector might not be provided, so you can actually calculate it using the vertices. But here you can see upright is the notations that we'll be using. So a typical structure of an OBJ file, you're going to see something like this, where you're going to see Vs as the first letter, and then followed by the X, Y, and Z values for each point. And then here for the faces, it'll describe all the vertices that make up the face. And if there's a normal vector, it's going to say which indices represent the normal vector. So before you can project anything onto your scene, you need to first calibrate your cameras. So if you're new to camera calibration, I have some videos all about it, so you could check it out on my channel. But the general idea is that you take some chessboard images, you feed it into your camera calibration app, and you get what's called your intrinsics, extrinsics, and your distortion parameters. So what these parameters do is the intrinsics, they take your camera frame to your image frame, and then you have your extrinsics, which takes your world frame to your camera frame. So after doing the camera calibration, these are the values I'm using for my camera matrix, as well as my distortion coefficients. So the next thing we need to do is post estimation with Aruko markers. If you're new to that, I have a video on that as well, so go ahead and check it out on my channel. But the idea of this is we want to figure out both the position and orientation of our marker. So the position is defined by the origin of this frame that you see here, and the orientation is the x, y, and z axes that you see in this image. So all of this is calculated using the solve PMP function, which then returns us our RVEC and TVEC. But one thing about RVEC is that you need to use the Rodriguez formulation to get the rotation matrix, which we'll use later on. So here you can see this is our Aruko marker post estimation, and you can see that it finds out the frame location, and you can see that it's doing pretty well. Okay, so one thing we need to do next is we have the OBJ file, which is some size, and we have our marker, which is some other size. We need to figure out how to make the size make sense so that when we project it onto our world, it doesn't look too big or too small. So here we see that this is our Aruko marker, we measured it to be about 2.5 inches, and you can see I've defined it this way. So you can see here this is in our Blender, and what I'd like to do, you could write a program to do this. I just did it in Blender because it was easier for me. But you can see here if I hide everything, if I zoom in here, this is going to be the cube. And this cube is actually about the same size as my Aruko marker. So I kind of just took this as a reference frame. So if I zoom, if I view my uh, model again, so you can see here, this is the one that I've resized. And this one right here is a gigantic one. So I just resized it using this function here. You could just come to the side and click on scale. Then you could just uh, go ahead and drag this to a size that you want. And then you could just export this to the OBJ file and you could use it in your model. 
So if we use the raw model, we're going to have a huge problem because there's a bunch of faces. And if we're using Python, you know how slow it is. We're going to probably crash our program. So what we're going to do is actually simplify our mesh using the decimate function. So you can see here, this is our simplified model. But these are the settings that I ended up using. Uh, first, I remesh this. So there's a uniform mesh. And then I called the decimate function in Blender. So this will bring down my face count. Uh, this is to 6,000 in this demo here. So I went from 1 million faces to 6,000 faces. Uh, but later on, I actually reduced it a little bit more so that it could be a little bit faster. But here you can see that the whole point of this is to optimize our program so that we only render the necessary faces and can still see the general shape without losing too much of the structure. Now, finally, we could project our baby Yoda from the world frame to the image frame by projecting the vertices. So here you can see this is the core algorithm. You can see that our projection matrix is calculated from our camera matrix. And then from there, we get our projected vertices by calling our project vertices function. And then lastly, we call our draw faces so we can see each individual face of our OBJ model. All right, so you can see our baby Yoda is projected now onto our screen at last. And you can see that it's following our, our Ruko marker pretty well. Uh, we'll be fixing some of the lighting later on, but here you can see that it's falling really well. So we'll do a lot of things. We'll be rotating it later on as well, so it could be upright. And I'll explain all the details very shortly. So next thing I want to talk about is culling. So the idea of this is you only want to display the faces that are visible to the camera. So here you can see that we have a yellow vector here, which is our view vector, and the screen normals, which is a normal to the faces that are visible, these are the ones that we are interested in projecting. And the red ones in the back, which are not visible, we don't want to project it. So the point of this is, especially when you have several objects, you may want to optimize your code so you're not rendering millions and millions of faces. So the idea is you have the view vector and you have your visible normal vector, so you want to take the dot product. If the dot product is greater than zero, you keep it. If it's not, we throw it away. So those are our not visible normals. So this right here is with culling. I'm not sure if you can notice it, but I think it's slightly more responsive when I'm moving it. Um, it'll be especially noticeable when you start adding more objects. But at least this is a nice feature to have, especially when speed is a concern. So here you can see I'm plotting my baby Yoda in Open3D. And you can see that this right here is the axis. So these are the local axis. In Blender, it shows the global axis, so I like to view it here for better visibility. But you can see here that red is the x-axis, so this means that the y-axis is pointing upwards, which makes the blue one the z-axis. So just for completion, you can see I drew in the y-axis here, and our goal is to make this match up with our y-axis in our Oruko marker. So you can see here, I put the two side by side. And you can see that in order to make the y-axis line up, what we have to do is actually rotate this by 90 degree rotation about the negative x-axis. And that way, the y-axis will be pointing upwards so that our model is upright. So you can see here, in order to do this in our code, we need to apply the rotation matrix and take that multiply it by our original rotation matrix to get our new rotation matrix, and then we'll be using that to do our transformations. All right, so now you can see that we have our baby Yoda upright finally. But you can still see the color because it's all green. It's a little bit hard to look at, so that's going to be our final step, which is applying the shading to make it more easily visible and make it look more three-dimensional. Because right now, it just kind of looks pretty flat because it's the same color. So we'll be fixing that very shortly. So now for the Lambertian shading, what we need to do for this is use some of the work that we did from our culling. So we got our view vector here, and we have our normal vectors for all of the faces. So the idea is we want to compare the normal vector directions and figure out what angle it's formed. And then based on the angle it forms, we're going to calculate some intensity for the light. So here you can see this is a general idea. You're going to have some reference vector. And the smaller the angle, the brighter we're going to make the face. The bigger the angle, the darker the face. And finally, we have the final product. You can see our Baby Yoda rendered. Very nice shading here. We can actually see it looks like a 3D model. You can see sometimes there's a little bit of artifact, but 
overall, you can see it's very nice. So glad this is working. It took me a while, but you can see that, oh, there's some glitches here, but overall it looks pretty good. You can see it's pretty responsive to comparing, considering that we're running this in Python. But go ahead and check it out. Use your own OBJ file and then play around with it. Again, my code is on my website at kevinwoodrobotics.com. So if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.